All right, let's turn to the Big East. There were two heavyweight matchups in this conference tonight, one ranked versus ranked in Milwaukee, number six, UConn, at number 25, Marquette. Marquette wins this game 82-76. to UConn has a number six next to their name in the AP poll. They're currently four and three in conference play. Meanwhile, in Cincinnati, if you liked offense, this was a treat. Xavier Creighton was such a high-level game offensively. Xavier wins 90 to 87. The Xavier Musketeers have won 10 straight. 10 straight. They are 6 and 0 in the Big East and a brief standings check. Who would have thunk in October that it would be Providence at 6 and 0, Xavier at 6 and 0, Marquette at 6 and 1, then Jeff Goodman, UConn's 4 and 3 and Creighton's 3 and 3. It's dumb. Yeah, I mean, Providence is the one that, that shocks me the most. Xavier surprises me. Providence shocks me at the top of the league. And, and again, you know, a lot of it early on in the season is about matchups, where you're playing, who you're playing, when and where. So it's sometimes you, you get all caught up in it, somebody's record early, right. and then it catches up with them a little bit. You know, it's front-loaded, Mac knows this. And, that, um, and that's everything. that's my that's my thing with UConn. Yeah, you know, I mean, like the the great thing about the Big East is they play everybody round robin style. You know, there's 20 league games. They play everybody home and away. There's none of that. Well, that team didn't have to play at you know uh, Creighton. They didn't have to play at Xavier. None of that. You love that so, when you were Xavier, right? Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. You know, it, it was it was fair. There was a champion crown because everybody played under the same circumstances. Yeah, sometimes you maybe had a 36-hour turnaround. The other team right. had a 72. But let's be honest. You get home and away. It equaled out that's, for the that's, that's a big part of it. I wouldn't – I mean, the Big East is one of the best conferences in the country, period. And then you look at it, and they've lost at Providence – a zoo yep. they've lost at xavier a zoo and i, I didn't see a, a ton of the game tonight but at marquette marquette's a great team so it's like let, let's let's talk about uconn in, in three or four weeks when they've rattled off five or six wins in a row and you know i, I just don't want to bury anybody because I, I think they're really talented and they play hard yep that being said and i agree with everything you just said what is it that these three games, because other than, than these three, UConn's gone, gone unscathed. What is it, Jeff, about these visits to Providence, Xavier, Marquette, that you take away for UConn that they've got to figure out? Well, I think Danny Hurley said it, right? I mean, like, are we tough enough? Are we mentally tough enough? We won in Portland, and that was a big step for them to take. But then it's like, okay, in Portland, it's different. Nobody was there. Like, they had home court advantage, to be honest, in Portland, if anybody did. And, and uh, often, nobody was in the stance for a lot of those games. Now you go into hostile environments. You're still a team and a program that hasn't really done anything going into this year. You know, you went to the NCAA tournament, but you lost in the first round last year. Yeah, they've taken steps, but I'm not sure they were ready for the number one ranking. I'm not sure they had really – earned the number one ranking at that point and again you go into providence we know how tough it is fana we like providence is unbelievable the last couple of years xavier's always elite like like max said and yeah. marquette's pretty tough to win and you know then I, I you wonder like does it get in your head a little bit you know you start losing these road games and you know jordan hawkins struggled tonight yeah. and he who, who do you think down the stretch jeff their go-to guy is they don't have one. And That's I the think they don't have a any, point guard. And anytime your best player is a, is a big guy that sort of needs the ball, yeah. I'm not saying it, it can't be done, but it can become difficult. You know, teams are, are doubling him, they're fronting him, they're not allowing him to catch the ball. Um, and, and everybody, maybe your on best the team, two players back, maybe your right. best two players are bigs right now, right? Right. Yeah. You're, yeah. Everybody on the team defers and knows he's your best player, but we can't really get him the ball in spots. And I'm not saying that's that's what, what's necessarily going on with Sonogo, but like that can become an issue with teams when, when their big guys are their best players. And to your point, in the last two minutes of the game tonight, when the going got tough, Hawkins actually got UConn a pulse. He hit a three, and then he was able to force it a turnover. It was too but, late. It, but it was too late. 
But when Marquette needed to make finishing plays, Cam Jones comes up with a dagger three. Tyler Kolek comes up with the key dish. You know what, too? I think people, Chris, forgot about what a good coach John Miller is because of all the shit that he went through. You know what I mean? I think people just forgot. They forgot, like, he had Arizona to three elite eights. Yeah. You know, like, he's such a good coach. And I actually think the year off did help him. Great, mm-hmm. great coach. He's a great coach. He, yep. he, he, um, knows how to get up a player's ass. You know, he also knows how to make those guys, you know, want to run through a wall for him, which is a fine line, you know, because there's some guys you get up their ass and it's like they, they don't want to play for you then, you know. And then I, I think that, like, again, he's got really skilled players. I think he'd be the first to say that. But their offense moves differently. You know, it, it flows differently. And, you know, a lot of times people will say you need that, that skilled four, that that six foot five guard that plays the four, like he's doing it with Nunji and he's doing it with Fremantle, and that's not to discredit that those guys' perimeter skills, you know, uh, but their bodies move differently because they're damn near seven feet tall, and to have both of those guys on the floor and have a free flowing offense that moves the way it does and scores the amount of points, I do think they have to get tougher defensively. I think that's probably driving Sean um, yeah. crazy yeah. a little bit. But they can score with with anybody, and they have. Um, but you know, to, to, to one last point, I'd like to make when you say, "Hey, I think it's changed him a little bit." But let's get him on after a loss. I want, I want, I want to, I want to see how <laughs> we don't he, uh... do that. We don't do that. <laughs> we we make sure we bring people on after wins, exactly. so they're happy, they're I'm smiling. Kidding. We don't need to see miserable Sean Miller. 